Hey and welcome to my channel where I experiment with different materials and techniques. Today we are mounting a taxidermy red fox. This is actually the third animal I've ever mounted, so this video is more of a documentation of my learning process and not really an instructional video made by someone who claims to be a professional, so please keep that in mind. I have, however, had the privilege to spend some time with museum taxidermists in Finland who have shown me their ways of working. I've taken an online class by Alice Markham about fox taxidermy specifically, and I've spent hours on taxidermy.net trying to absorb as much information as possible. We are starting with a polyurethane foam form that I had ordered from a taxidermy store. I chose the form based on the measurements of the fox carcass and I also wanted to mount something in a relatively easy position. This doesn't only make it easier for me to just learn the very basics of mounting a skin, but it also makes it easier to build a base for this fox since we don't have to use any kind of props like tree stumps or stuff like that to support him. I start off by prepping the form for the skin. I'm making a slit to the mouth area so that we can tuck in the lips later. And I also need to make holes to the sides of the head so that we can stick in our ear liners. I was trying my best to look at different reference pictures to see where the ear should be and carve the holes based on that. I had to almost carve out the whole head entirely. I might also have to carve out the eye holes a bit if it looks like I cannot fit in the glass eyes properly. Next, I smoothed out some of the seams and markings that were left from the molding process. I used a foam rasp, a stout rougher and a sanding block for that. I also went over the whole form with a rough sanding block to roughen up the surface so that the skin and the height paste could adhere to it better. Next I would try on the ear lines and see if they needed to be cut down, but they seemed to fit. My first thought was to glue the ear lines in at this stage. I had some height paste left from my previous projects, but I felt like it was very sticky and didn't spread out evenly, so I decided to try latex caulk with silicone because I heard that some taxidermists use this successfully. I mixed it with a bit of red acrylic paint and set it aside. I'm taking a bit of critter clay and adding it to the cutaneous marginal pouch, aka Henry's pocket, that is this little fold of skin at the outer side of the ear. I'm using critter clay because it has an appropriate working time and it doesn't really shrink once it dries like many craft clays do. I have a love-hate relationship with this clay because it either dries up or gets moldy in between my projects, but I'd still get this every time because at least it gives me predictable results. This fox was case skinned, which means that there was just an opening at the back legs and the skin had been removed in one tube. I knew I wouldn't be able to get it on the mannequin without cutting it further, so I decided to make a dorsal cut so that I can slide the front paws in and then stitch the hind legs and the back. This way I didn't have to do much sewing. I had ordered the mannequin based on the measurements I took of the fox before skinning, but this was the first time I got to actually fit the skin on it. I pinned the skin down using sewing pins and made sure that I would find specific landmarks like the elbows to get the skin in the right places. This fox was a male fox, so I also added some clay to the um, um, parts that were removed at the fleshing stage. This form didn't come with a wire for the tail, which I was surprised about, but 
I attempted to make one from some wire I had. I wrapped some polyfill around it to make it a bit thicker, but it ended up being a bit too thick. Later in the process, I ended up wrapping four wires around each other because the wire was too thin to hold the tail up on its own. Next, I started to work on the paws. I had removed all of the bones and even the last knuckle from the paw, so now I had to add some criticlay into the toes to make them look full again. Once I had the clay in the paws, I started sewing the hide together, starting from the feet and working my way up. I'm using some really thin fishing line I bought from Walmart for just $2 and a regular sewing needle. I also have curved needles, but they are a bit thicker, so I prefer working with a straight needle. Once I start working at the back seam, I spread some of that latex caulk on the mannequin. I know some people use the hide paste on the whole animal and some people only on certain places. I didn't put it on the legs, but I put it on the body and the face. Now that I had the skin on the mannequin, all that was left to do was the face. At this point I finally attached the ear liners to the ears. I noticed some hair was starting to come off of the ears, so I was too scared to remove the ear liners at this point. Instead, I would try to get the latex caulk in the ears using a brush. I had seen someone mixing red paint with Bondo and use it for attaching the ear liners to give the ears a healthy pink glow, so I wanted to see if that would work for this fox as well. I should probably try Bondo too, but at this point I thought that the ear liners alone should give enough rigidity for the ears, so I only used the latex caulk. The reason we use ear liners is that, first of all, I removed all cartilage from the ears before tanning, and even if there was cartilage, big ears like this don't hold their shape very well when they dry without something giving the structure. I attached the ear liner to the holes with critically and tried to position them correctly using a picture of a fox as a reference. This was hands down the most difficult part of the project for me because the ears just looked too big and I couldn't get them in the angle I wanted, so I kept adjusting them throughout this project. Next, I worked on the eyes. I'm using Van Dyke's competition series glass eyes and I'm setting them with critter clay. I'm trying to set the pupils so that they are just tiny bit slanted inwards and then I'm building the eyelids and the muscles around the eyes with the critter clay. Next, I had added some latex caulk on the face and I start to tuck in the lips. I'm starting with the center of the lower lip and I'm using a flat sculpting tool to push in the extra lip skin. This extra skin is a result of splitting the lips during the fleshing process. Once I had tucked the lower lip, I started tucking the upper lip in the same way. I added a bit of critter clay on the top lip to make it a bit plumber, but later I removed most of it because it didn't look right. I didn't really know what to do with the sides of the lips because tucking it all in could result in a very pursed expression, so I kind of just pinned the skin down against the cheek. Next, I started to work on the eyes. The eyelids had been split during the fleshing process as well, so I had some extra skin to work with. 
I tuck the skin under the clay with a sculpting tool, starting from the inner corner of the eye. Using a reference, I tried to position the eyelids so that they would look realistic and typical for a predator. I also used a tool to create some definition in the areas where foxes have musculature, for example the muscles on the forehead that control the little eyebrow hair. At this point I had been working on this fox for 12 hours straight, so I called it a day and put a plastic bag over the head so I could continue with the details the next day. The next day I thought that I should blow dry the fox because I felt like the wet hair was distracting me too much when I was doing the sculpting work. I also wanted to see if the fox was really greasy and if I needed to give him another bath at some point. He was looking slightly better now that he was dry and it was easier for me to adjust the facial features now. I realized that the face looked too cartoonish and had too many harsh lines, so I softened out the appearance a lot. All this time I used pictures of red foxes as reference. I also decided to cart the ears because although I had opened the ears completely, the ear liners didn't reach all the way to the tip of the ears, so I was afraid that once the ears started to dry, they would curl up at the tips. I supported the ears with pieces of cardboard and hair clips. I also added some clay to the other ear where the skin was a bit torn in order to create a seamless surface I could paint on later. I also fixed the eyes a bit since looking at the reference the upper lid is quite tucked in and you can't see the black waterline much. I also tried my best to smooth out any remaining harsh lines on the face. Then I pinned everything in place again and let it dry. A couple of days later, I decided to wash the fox because the hair looked a bit greasy from the tanning. The idea is to quickly wet the hair, shampoo and condition it and dry it without wetting the skin too much. However, this is quite difficult because you also have to make sure that you rinse out all the product. I washed the tail in the sink and then proceeded to wash the rest of the fox in the shower. I then proceeded to quickly blow dry the hair. My hair dryer blows, so I also tried a leaf blower, but that was even worse, so I stuck with the hair dryer and alternated between warm and cool settings. I gently used a dog grooming brush to separate the hair while I dried it and over directed it to create more volume. Once the hair was dry, I let the fox air dry for about a week and then I started to work on some detail work. Ideally, I should have waited for at least two weeks before this part, but I was too impatient and the fox looked like it was pretty dry already. However, a lot of drying takes place even after the skin is dry to touch, so if you want to be safe, wait a bit longer. So while I had been working on the ears, some hair did eventually fall off, which was unfortunate. I wasn't too discouraged though, because I knew that it would be relatively easy to disguise with some paint. I mixed up a bit of black and brown paint for my airbrush and sprayed that on the areas that didn't have any hair. The paint is kind of shiny on the camera because a light is shined on it directly, but in real life it is more matte and not very visible. You can always use black eyeshadow or something similar to matte down shiny surfaces if needed. Looking at a reference photo, I realized that foxes don't have pink ears, so I didn't only cover the clay with paint, but also airbrush the rest of the inside of the ears.
The pink shade gave a very realistic and nice undertone to the ear skin though. I then carefully removed the pins and brushed out the face and the whiskers. I would then use the same shade of black to airbrush the nose and the waterline on the eyes. The fox was looking a bit emo, so I used a cotton swab and a small wire brush to blend out the paint. Since I had carded the ears, the hair had dried up a bit weird. I sprayed some water on the hair and tried to style it with a blow dryer, but since I was too scared to wet the skin at this point, considering all the slippage that had occurred, I wasn't able to get the hair styled exactly the way I wanted. I then cleaned the eyes with Windex, which is a glass and window cleaner, but I noticed that if I just leave it on to evaporate, it leaves on a cloud residue, so I would rub the eyes with a dry cotton swab to polish them. Next, I grabbed some glossy finish Mod Podge and a fine tip brush and brushed it carefully on the waterline. I tried to get it between the waterline and the eyeball so that I could fill any gaps between them and once this glue dries, it will give off a nice glossy finish that will make the eyes look wet. I also added a bit of Mod Podge on the nose to make it look wet. And here is the finished fox. For my first taxidermy fox, I'm very pleased with how this turned out. There will always be things to improve on and the learning never stops, but just the fact that I was able to keep most of the hair on this fox is already mind-blowing to me. Or maybe I screwed up completely and <laughs> did everything wrong and will find the fox half eaten by bucks, but only time will tell. Or maybe you will tell that in the comment section. I hope you found this video interesting and if you'd like to see how I did the habitat base for the fox, subscribe to this channel now and check out the next video. Thank you so much for watching and happy crafting!